Mendel proposed that you inherit a gene either from your mother or from your father, but not a mixture of both. In our genetic crosses video, we looked at what happens when yellow pea pod and green pea pod parents are crossed and represented the offspring in genetic crosses. In this video, we are going to look at monohybrid crosses using Punnett squares. A monohybrid cross is the study of the inheritance of one characteristic, such as the pea pod color. A Punnett square is a diagram that is used to predict the outcome of a particular cross. It is used by biologists to determine the probability of an offspring having a particular genotype. The genotype represents the genes of the organism and is shown by two letters. A capital letter represents the dominant form of a gene or allele and a lowercase letter represents the recessive form of the gene. So the dominant yellow pea pod is shown by capital Y and the recessive green pea pod by little y. Now back to our Punnett squares. We start with an empty grid like this. If we crossed a heterozygous YY and a recessive YY parent together, we enter the first parent's genotype here, split them and enter one Y in the first column and the other Y in the second column. And the second parent here, doing the same thing, one Y in the top row and the second Y in the bottom row. It doesn't matter which parent you put where, both are correct. So these are the parent's genotypes and these are going to be the possible offspring genotypes. Let's fill in the gaps. I'll do the first one for you. Dominant Y and Recessive Y gives YY. Can you complete the rest of the Punnett square? Pause the video, have a think and click play when you're ready to check. Did you get it right? Make sure you always have two letters in each of the four boxes. We have two YY genotypes, which means 50% of these offspring would have the dominant yellow pea pods. And we have two YY genotypes. So 50% of these offspring would have the recessive green pea pods. We could write this as one to one yellow green phenotypic ratio. Let's look at another example. In the cystic fibrosis video, we've discovered that cystic fibrosis is caused by a mutation on a recessive gene. You can be a carrier, but not suffer from the condition. Let's have a look at the probability of offspring being cystic fibrosis sufferers when two carrier parents with the CC genotype mate. Can you complete the Punnett square? Pause the video, work it out, and click play when you're ready. Did you get it right? So there is a 25% chance that the offspring of two carrier parents will be sufferers of cystic fibrosis. We can represent this in a one to one ratio. See how easy Punnett squares are for showing probability of offspring genotypes? But remember, these are just probabilities. We call these the unexpected results. So whilst we could expect a 25% of offspring of two cystic fibrosis carriers to suffer from the disease, it is a probability. The actual results may be different. Two carrier parents could potentially have four children that are all non-carrier CC genotypes. Before we finish, maybe some of you have been wondering why we are allowed to just split up the parental genotype into two separate letters. This is because during meiosis, the cell division that produces sperm and egg cells, the chromosomes are separated into two halves. So the dominant C is pulled one way to form one sperm or egg cell, and the recessive C of the other chromosome is pulled the other way to form a different sperm or egg cell. So half the sex cells will have the dominant C and the other half will have the recessive C. So this C represents half of the sex cells and this C represents the other half of the sex cells. So that is Punnett squares. Very useful for looking at the probability of genotypes of offspring. We will look at co-dominance and sex determination in different videos.